fabulous. We're recording. So hello, everybody. For those who don't know me, I'm Deborah Lupien, the answer diva of Akasha Unleashed. And I'm delighted that you're all here on this lovely Saturday morning or evening or afternoon, whatever it is, wherever you are, because we have people from everywhere today. So last night, I did a little meditation and I said, you know, we're doing this special Zoom call today. And do you have anything you'd like to share with everybody? And I got this really cool meditation. So we're going to do that at the end of the call so that we can end on that nice, lovely, flowing energy. Meanwhile, we're going to just jump in. And if people have questions, we'll answer questions. We'll do some channeling. It's totally up to you what it is that you need that I can help you with today. So we're just going to have fun because if we're not having fun, what is the point, right? And the guides are constantly telling me a message. You guys need to lighten up. You didn't come here to work all the time and to be so serious and stressed out. You came to have a really good time. So do a little more of that, will you please? So we'll try to do our best. So if you got a joke, throw that in there too. Just going to take a moment and just take a couple of deep breaths and allow the energies of the universe to come and be with us today to lift us all up. to inspire us, and to bless our gathering, because it is a lovely time to be together, and it's a privilege to have all of you here today. And I cherish that moment with you, and I'm excited to see what's going to come. So thank you, thank you, thank you to all that is for being with us, for loving us, for energizing us, and blessing us so richly. All right, so the lunar eclipse and what to expect. Um, let me just see what they have to say about that, if there's anything special about the lunar eclipse that we need to know about. Oh, I'm seeing this like a, a big, like a fireworks going off, but it's big and white. It's brilliant white, and it's just exploding all over the sky. And so the energy of that is exciting and fun. So it's like, don't go into this with a, a feeling of foreboding, because if you do, then that's probably what you'll see. Go into it with a feeling of excitement and anticipation, because the energies right now are just swirling madly. The um, cosmic wave of transformation is continuing to move across the earth, affecting both the earth and all of the inhabitants, people and animals. So there's nothing we can do to stop that. And in fact, we wouldn't want to because it is quite wonderful. And it is ushering in a new age. We are many of us at this moment becoming even more awakened as souls. And our frequency is rising. In fact, several people I've talked to recently have a higher frequency than they did when I first encountered them. So there's evidence that's being shown to us of our rising frequency, which means we are more in alignment with the fifth dimension, so it will be easier for us to connect. So those of you who have tried, don't give up, keep trying, because your energy is getting closer and closer so that you will be able to have that amazing experience. So as far as the eclipse is going, they're just showing me, it's, it's now it's turning into ice cream, which who doesn't like ice cream, right? It's sweet and it's fun and it's wonderful. So just be open to whatever amazing, wonderful things come, because they will be different for everybody. And it will be in alignment with what you have put out there, what you have been asking for, those manifestations that you've been looking for. Now you will be closer to them than ever because of the alignment of the energies. So just bask in appreciation for that and allow it to come to you. And that blocked up energy that you may have been feeling we're going to work on that later in the meditation. But in the meantime, just let it go. Just breathe, relax, and allow. Try not to get into that space of fear and worry. Because when you do that, you create more of the same. And that's not what you want in your life. So when that happens, when you catch yourself in that space of fear and worry, breathe, relax, allow your thoughts, to turn to something happy, a memory, something that you cherish that makes you feel good, that will be your switch. That will be your own personal positive trigger to switch you back into 
a positive frame. And you know, our thoughts are like these mice running around and distracting and that whole squirrel concept, right? So when that happens to you, flip the switch, go back to the positive thought and memory and bask in that. Be thankful for that. Allow more positive to come to you because you've switched your energy into that positive open state. And so that's the secret to getting out of that state of fear and worry is just keep practicing switching your thoughts back. And I know that sounds oversimplified and some of you may be thinking, well, easier said than done. Yeah, I know, I've been there. Just keep doing it. It's like a muscle. You're going to develop that muscle. You're going to get stronger. The more you do it, the easier it gets. And if you need to go into a healing meditation, allow that to switch you over so that then you can stay in that space of focused on the positive thoughts. So I think that's about all that's coming on the lunar eclipse. But it's going to be spectacular. That's what they're showing me. It's just really exciting and fun. So are there any other questions? Okay. Well, if you've got any questions, just type them up there for me. I'm going to tell you about this experience I had recently. I just have to find it. I was doing a meditation, and I always do a grounding when I start. But this time, this beautiful violet crystal appeared above my crown chakra. So here I am, I'm going into my grounding, and this beautiful crystal is up here. And it's, it's a violet tinted crystal, and it's pouring this energy down on me. And it's like a shower, and it's covering my entire energy body and filling me with all of this amazing healing and energizing stuff. And it felt like it's a shifting into this new space that we're all going to. And ever since that happened, you're nodding your head over there, Marie. Have you had the same? Have you had something like that? Let's see. There we go. I'm trying to unmute you and it's not. Okay. Now you're unmuted. Yeah. Have you? No, it, it reminds me of a meditation I was doing um, about the St. Germain healing transformational energy, transmuting energy. And I was doing the same thing. I was letting this violet light um, penetrate through my crown chakra and fill my whole entire, almost like felt exactly how you described it. Yeah, that's awesome. And did you notice anything shifting for you after that? Uh, definitely, definitely. It, it feels like that shift that you're talking about shifting from the three dimension to the fifth dimension where you just you have a different lens on 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 your day-to-day -day mundane life it's like you're wearing a new set of glasses yeah exactly hi elena glad you made it so after that happened it was the oddest thing the next time i went into meditation i went up in this elevator and I'm finally on the sixth floor so I think that means I went to the sixth dimension that's what it felt like and it was a very different environment from what I'm used to seeing and there was this grandmother oak tree that was there at the entrance and she was just massive and you could just feel this amazing wisdom and energy coming from her and that she has a lot to share but what I found happened is that I haven't adjusted yet to that new level and so it felt like trying to run through water and everything was coming. It was like it was clogged, right? It was coming very slowly and with a lot more effort than what I'm used to because it normally just flows. So that's what's been happening. And I know that means that it's a sign that other people are going to be shifting into this new energy as well. So when I get more about that, I'll be sharing more with you. But right now I'm still trying to adapt to it myself so that I can process it and figure out what it is I'm supposed to teach about it and share. So it's been really cool. So we have Christine. The outer reality reflects the inner reality and you're finding a lot of struggle in your daily life. So are you creating the struggles? And what to do about noisy neighbors and 
road maintenance and slack politicians. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Is that a can of worms? Well, let's start with the politicians because you know, we're having a bit of that here in the US as well. So when this whole thing happened with Trump getting elected, a lot of people were very devastated. Energetically, it was just, you know, like being kicked in the solar plexus because many of us felt like he was bringing a lot of darkness. And sadly, we've seen a lot of that happen. So the message I got at that time is that some people are saying, oh, he was supposed to, and it was, there's a reason for this. But what I got was it's kind of in the middle we didn't need him to come. We could have gone a different way, but people made that choice. So this is where we're at and it's impacting the entire world, but that's where we are. So we have to go forward from that place and we each have to find our equilibrium with that. So what they explained is that there was a lot of this dark oozing hatred and negativity always there, just kind of, you know, beneath us and this was the opportunity for that to come out and get exposed to the light to be transmuted. So it's not going to be fun going through this process of being there while it's being transmuted and exposed, but it is going to be a positive thing in the long run because we'll get it out of there. So it won't be just oozing beneath our feet like a time bomb waiting to go off. We are going to come out of this better for the experience. It's going to cause more of us to step forward and really stand in our power it's going to cause us to go deeper, to get into our inner world and connect so that we'll have the strength to stand up to whatever is to come because it can be a little frightening if you let yourself go that way. So what I've been teaching people is that we can't really abdicate our responsibility. So it is important to stand for something and stand up when there's injustice, but you don't have to dance with it. You don't have to get so engaged with it that it drags you down into a negative place. So it's, we're going to be doing this balancing act for a while and we'll grow from it. It's, it's not all bad. It's not going to be terribly fun, but that's where we can step up to the challenge. And as I mentioned earlier, when those dark thoughts come, replace them as quickly as you can with the joyful, positive ones. And if you don't have anything that you can focus on, then go out and create something because you need that to hold on to. That will be your touchstone to keep you in this centered, rational place to maintain some sanity when it feels like the world is going insane around you. So that's what I can tell you about the politicians. And pretty much the same for the, the noisy neighbors and the road maintenance. You know, yeah, if there's something you can do about it, if you can write a letter, if you can make some phone calls, do that. Be proactive because they do tell us take action to get things to, to stir up and get the energy moving. But don't get so bogged down in it that it shifts you into depression or into the blues or just, you know, gets you off your game because you want to stay in that centered place where you are open to the full receiving of what divine has to share with us. So it's like when you get knocked off your, your pins there and instead of being this beautiful vessel that's open and that's receiving all that divine is sending to us all the time, it's like you're kind of cockeyed, you know? And so all this energy is flowing down, but it's bouncing off of you because you're off balance and you can't receive it all. And you're only getting a small portion of what you need and what you could be getting. So it behooves you to step out of that as quickly as possible. And doing that is getting into that place of feeling better. And what makes you feel better is to do something or to remember something that was positive and happy. And so hold on to that, whatever that is for you. Now, are you creating these struggles? Well, yes and no. I mean, we are impacted by what happens around us from other people, but we are also attracting those struggles, right? And they give us the chance to step up and to test ourselves and to work on getting into that place of balance and staying there. So for some people, if there are any people on the call today with the gift of order, you will understand this really well. And for you, it's like you've got to be on that balance beam so that you don't 
fall off. So you're always trying to stay in that place of balance. So when these things come along and they smack you in the face, and here you are doing everything you can, if you fall, you fall. Don't judge. Get back up. You can. They'll be there to pick you up if, if you need them to. So don't engage with that. Don't stay there any longer than you absolutely have to. Get up and get moving forward again. Because in that moving forward, you get the energies moving again, which opens the door for more of what you desire to come into you. Awesome. So Christine, um, let's unmute you and just, does that make sense? Is that helpful? It does. Um, um, I was asking the question and I put um, an example so you would understand what I mean. I heard a few times that your outer reality re reflects what's inside you is that you create your outer reality. Um, but really, I'm a quiet person who's stressing because of the outer reality. So you see, you see what I mean? So I feel it's the other way around, that the outer reality creates who I am right now because it's stressing me. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so that's why I wanted an explanation about it because I think it's, you know, I don't see how, for example, I'm, I'm a quiet person and I don't see how I'm responsible for noisy neighbors. You see how I create that. I don't get it. If it's a universal law, I don't understand it. Well, they came there. You didn't necessarily create that, but you get to choose what you do about it. So you can choose to get all upset and let your energy go fizzy and then that's going to impact your work, right? Or you can choose to play music, to drown them out or to not be there during the hours when it's so noisy. You know, there's always a choice. We just don't always see it. So if you have to, if you really want to get drastic about it, take a step back and say, if I were to die next week, what would I do about this problem? Because that really brings it into clarity. When it's life or death, then we see the choices. It's like in my book, I, I told the story of, in my most recent past life, I was married to this abusive man. And it was in a time when there weren't resources and I didn't have anybody to turn to, at least I didn't think I did. So from that perspective, it felt like I was trapped. There was no choice, right? So one night I, I felt I'd had enough and I escaped and I ran down the road. He chased after me and ran me down and killed me with his car. So while I couldn't see it in that lifetime, and I died because I didn't see the choice and make it, in this lifetime, I can look at that and say, oh, there was always a choice. I could have left at any time. I could have not chosen this abusive man. I could have allowed my intuition to guide me better and not made that bad choice. But having made it, as soon as I found out it was a bad choice, the right thing for me to do would be make another choice, get out of there sooner rather than later. Because in fact, that spirit chased me into this world and we ended up having another abusive relationship, which I was able to escape from. So that karma is a real bummer sometimes, but it's there, we resolve it and we move on and we grow and learn from it. So in your case, even though it looks like you don't have a choice, you do. The guides assure me there's always one, we just don't see it. So you could use your cards, you could maybe ask somebody else to do a reading for you. You could move. You could send loving energy towards them, which might make them so uncomfortable that they move. I don't know. <laughs> That's one way to approach it. But I do know that there have been cases where by not engaging with the negativity, right? You get into a tug of war when you're feeling that way. Your negative energy, because you're upset, reaches out and connects with them, and maybe that's feeding what they're doing, I don't know. But when you do that, we, you prolong it, we prolong it. So not engaging with it is the first thing you can do. Find something else to do to make yourself feel better. And mm -hmm. like I say, maybe that just means not being present during the hours when it's the worst, or finding a way to buffer it. When you do that and you shift your own energy, that new positive energy is going to go out and it will impact them. And then they get to choose what they do about it. Maybe they'll change their habits. Maybe they will move. Something okay. will shift for you. Does that make sense? It does. It does. Um, I, I seem to be fighting a lot. And um, I don't want to fight. <laughs> yeah. See? 
<laughs> well, the cool thing about that, Christine, as soon as you get into that place where you recognize, oh my gosh, I am fighting and mm -hmm. I don't want that, then you mm -hmm. get to take that back and decide, what can you do differently? And try just little things, little changes, and see what happens. Because, you know, sometimes it could be as simple as, let's say you get a cat and they're allergic to cats, and that causes them to leave. Who knows? It could be something very simple that you just, you stumble into, but really it was a breadcrumb that your guides put for you because you opened up to the possibility of, oh, I can change this with choices rather than getting into that tug of war with it. Sure. So let me just take a moment to ask your guides if they have anything they want to share with you about that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Oh, I'm seeing like this warm, well, it's not warm, but this blanket of snow that is so perfect and so peaceful and it's totally undisturbed. Joel, you'll connect to this. It's like when that fresh snowfall comes before anybody has been out there to put any tracks in it. And it's just so magnificent. And that's what you can have, Christine, that is there for you. It's like you flip the switch and you step over into that space where it's undisturbed and peaceful. And you have the power to do that. It's going to take a little practice. It's going to take a little ingenuity. Do you remember what your, your gift is, Christine? No. Let me, let me just look it up for you real quick because there might Sorry. be something. That's all right. No problem. There might be something a little more that will highlight for us once I reconnect with what your gift is. For some reason, I'm thinking your truth. Does that ring a bell? Yep. You are divine truth. Yes. And you also come from the soul group Vega. I don't know if we talked about that or not, but mm -hmm. the Vega soul group, Christine, are these amazing, excitable, fun loving people. They are the mm -hmm. ones that will run out on the stage and say, ta da! Look at me, world. I'm having a ball. That's their energy. So if you're not experiencing that, then you're out of alignment with that part of yourself because it's a huge part of who you are. And speaking your truth, however you do that, I know through your readings you do that, which is beautiful, but maybe there are other places where you're not speaking your truth. And that's part of what's causing this struggle that you're feeling. So I invite you to revisit that reading that we did, reconnect because if you don't even remember what your gift is, then you're clearly not using it. And oh my gosh, it is so important. It informs on everything that you do. So try that and let me know how that goes, what you feel shifting for you. Because I think you're just slightly out of balance. It's not huge, mm -hmm. but it's a slight adjustment that will help you greatly. Thanks very much. Um, this is my whole point is uh, because I, I want to get that connection again. I feel a bit disconnected. Uh, by outside events and you know it's easy to think well you just get back in your space but uh, when you go get like let's say you know 10 hours of noise every day um, and you're someone who meditates and reads and you know it gets to you <laughs> so um, and it stresses you so I don't want to go on about my problem it's just that um, I wanted to know if I was part of it in a way, you know, that, that's what really interests me. It's that question. Are we, am I dancing with them in that uh, struggle, right? They make the noise, I complain. And it, you, you know, that, that's, that's my question, how to get out of that loop that's yeah, going so, on. So when it happens and you feel that stress energy coming up, that's when you stop yourself and you look around and say, what can I do? Can I put on headphones? Would that help? Is that a possibility? At least for part mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how you feel about earplugs. You could always do earplugs. And somebody else asked in the chat, have you talked to your neighbors about it? Yeah, it's been a five year fight now. Fifth year with like politicians involved and everything. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a long time. But, um, oh, thank you, Anna. She recognizes my voice from YouTube. 
Yeah, I'm an open spiritual person, but I do have this issue at home. But anyway, um, thank you for that. I'll, I'll revisit the reading I had with you. Sure. Okay, awesome. Because I think that will help you. You want to reconnect with yourself as the spiritual warrior of truth. Because, I mean, and, and this instance with your neighbors, this is a place where if you're not speaking the truth and letting them know how uncomfortable they're making you, then you're being blocked and you're not using your gift, which of course will mm -hmm. magnify the stress because it'll show up in other areas of your life where you're not using your gift. That's right. So for you, you're using it in your readings, which is beautiful, but you do need to use it in other places. And because you're also Vega, for you, if you can get out and speak to groups of people, that's going to feed your soul because you're going to get that energetic feedback loop, the validation from people when you share that truth with them. I think we talked mm -hmm. about that. So yes. when you can get out and do more of that to feed your soul, you're automatically going to shift back into a better feeling place which then will ripple into other areas of stress like the neighbors so that perhaps it won't bother you as much. Thank so you very much. this is what I'm getting, Christine. It's like <laughs> they're an alarm bell going off to tell you, hey, Christine, you're out of balance. Fix it mm. already. I know, I know. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. So they're like your annoying alarm clock, so you just have to figure out how to snooze them. Sure. Makes sense? It does, thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, let's see if there are any other. Okay, so Althea. Um, Althea, are you? I don't see a name here so i guess you must be on the phone you're one of the people on the phone okay so your gift is is love and healing and you want to know how to bring more healing and light to yourself and your life so for you love and healing is you just breathe it you exude it it's just who you are by being you don't have to even do anything extra for that so if you're feeling out of balance with it then i encourage you to practice some self-love first Spend some time in meditation, get yourself centered before you venture out and share your love and healing gift with other people. When you do that though, be really careful because your tendency is to overgive and to become a doormat. So you want to be in a place where you give from a feeling of love and abundance, but you don't overgive. And if they're not meeting you halfway, if they're not reciprocating in some way, you're not feeding your soul, by helping these people, then you don't want to help them anymore because you want to be in a fair exchange of energy with people. And there will be those who will take and take and take as long as you allow it. So for you, that's a boundary that you need to be aware of to set for yourself. So the self-love for you is huge to start first, get centered, do those meditations. And I've got some healing meditations if you need them. So just hit me up and I'll send them to you. And then sharing it with others you can do that in any way you want it doesn't mean you have to be a healer i think we talked about that it just means that by being in your presence people will open up and share with you just because they feel that space of love and non-judgment that you exude because that's how you're wired you can't help it it just happens when you're there and you're such a blessing to people so be careful that you don't overextend and get depleted. You always want to make sure that you refill your vessel so that you're coming from that place of being filled up so that you do have something to share. And then when you do share, make sure you're not sharing your own energy with them. You, are, you can channel it through you to them from divine, but not your own energy, if that makes sense. Because a lot of healers fall into that trap where they're trying to give their own energy to heal. And it's from a place of caring and love, but it's misguided because we all have the ability to get as much from divine as we need. We never need take it from anybody else. That's being an energy vampire. So be conscious when you are sharing your energy that you are focusing, that it's channeling through your crown chakra and then coming out your hands and your heart chakra to share with them. And that will help you a lot. You get a lot of people that hug you. Yeah, I, I imagine they do. They probably come up to you in the supermarket and just start bending your ear because 
you just have that energy about you that invites them in. And if you're feeling like you're becoming depleted, there is that tool from Donna Eden that I recommend to the people with divine order especially, but for you it would be good as well, called Zip Up. So shoot me an email if you haven't tried that, and I'll send you the link, because it's like putting on your own personal force field. So it creates that barrier energetically so that all of that negative energy that's out there all of the time doesn't come in and invade your space. It just gives you that boundary until you get to the place where you can do that for yourself. Because the more you do that, your muscle will build and you won't need somebody to do it for you or a tool. You'll be able to do that yourself. So let me know if that makes sense. And we have a hand raised here. So, okay, whoever that is at um, the last four, it's 3977. What's your question? Yes. Hi. You know what? I just went in to um, speak with my guides the other day and I got, uh, they started giving, uh, spelling out a name for me and it was for me, a new name. Ha and what does that mean when you get a new name? <laughs> Calling yourself, Can you hear me? You, calling you a new name, you mean? Yeah, they spelled, they were spelling out a name. And then when I went in to look up a name, meaning it, it and it means something, it, it is a name and it, me, it meant something. What does it mean when they give you a name? It's almost like they're renaming you. Can you type your name in the chat box? That way it won't be on the recording. Uh, I, then I can just ask. I'm, I'm using my phone. Is that okay? I'm, I'm using a phone. I don't have a... Okay. Do you mind saying your name? At least your first name? Yeah, I'm Sherry. 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 I, I did a reading. You did a reading for me, a birthday reading for me not too long ago. Okay, awesome. Let me just ask your guides what that means, because it could mean different things to different people. I guess I want to know what they want me to do with that. Do they want me to use that name from now on? Oh, I'm getting, it's like a pet name that they're calling you and it's probably connected to a previous incarnation. And as far as, okay. Hey, if you like it, use it. We don't care. It's okay. Okay. What do you want to call okay. yourself? Right. Because okay. Yeah. That's part of your identity. So how do you want to present yourself to the world? That's what it's about. Okay. So okay. What, what would feel um, good to you? Pardon? What would feel good to you? Um, the, the name, well, it would feel good to use that. Yes, absolutely. And I guess, um, you know, I've been thinking about doing some readings and things like that. And I guess kind of that name is what, what they were saying to me is, is I need to, to, to balance more because I spend a lot of time in the spiritual world. And I guess this name, they were laughing about it. They were laughing about it. We love you here, but it, you really need to spend a little more time balancing that and start doing some of the work and readings and things like that. So I was just wondering if I should just use that probably as a name, uh, as a professional name. If that makes you happy, absolutely. If it resonates okay. and it feels good, do it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. That's all I want to know. I just see people sometimes that have, they use another name and I'm wondering, I was just wondering if that's what that was. Well, I think sometimes when they use another name, it's probably about keeping their themselves private, right? So they can have a separate life and right. safe and protected or whatever it is that they're needing. But in this case, okay. if it resonates with you and you like it, absolutely. So they were just okay. kind of letting you know that's their pet name. You've probably used it in a past life. And maybe it, it's feeling like there might be more that comes to you from that. Like there's more to the story, if that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah. Like, okay. There's a little piece of it. It's it's to tantalize you and, and to bring you along. But as far as the spending too much time in meditation, yeah, that actually can be a little bit of a problem because you came here to have this third dimensional experience. So if you end up spending all of your time in meditation, then you're not actually out there doing your purpose. Right? Right. Right. And so then you don't have the opportunity to get into that energetic feedback loop that feeds your soul. So you can do it as a choice, but your life experience is going to be far smaller than it would have been had mm -hmm. you gotten out there and engaged with people and used your gift. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So I'm going to put you back on mute. There was a, a reading I did way back when I first got started 
with this lady and they actually said to her, you need to not spend so much time doing all of this spiritual stuff because it's not time for you to become ethereal yet. You're still a third dimensional being. And it was just kind of a funny way of putting it. But yeah, that, that message comes up now and then. Hey, Kimberly, glad to see you. How you doing? Let me just unmute you. How's the baby? Oh, she's awesome. She's really awesome. She's at such a fun age right now. She's 16 months. So every she's able to start like communicating what's interesting to her and what she wants to do. And she's just so excited by life right now. She just loves everything. <laughs> oh, it's such a blessing. Wonderful. Yeah. Did you have a yeah. question? Um, I guess the only thing I was thinking of, um, cause you did a reading for me like way back. Um, I think it was 2017 actually, uh, like February, March. So a couple years ago, and I'm not totally remembering everything that you said. I remember that it really resonated with me and I, I was like really kind of blown away by it, but I'm not remembering like a lot of details. And I know that I've grown a lot since then. Mm -hmm. So I've just been thinking about like, huh, you know, I wonder what I would think about it now that I'm, I'm more further along, I guess, in my journey, you know? Do you remember what I told you your gift was? Um, not totally. Okay. Like I, I have kind of a sense of what a gift could be mm -hmm. uh, for myself. Um, I'm just not remembering what you had said <laughs> specifically. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. I just looked you up. I have my database handy. Oh, so, good. So you are divine power, which means that you are a natural entrepreneur. You're very independent and strong-willed. Free choice is like the be-all, end-all to you. You don't like to get boxed in. Mm. You are somebody who makes decisions quickly, and then you need to get moving quickly because what happens is you love tools and you have all these tools that you've learned how to use, whether they're hand tools or productivity tools or what have you. But because you have all these tools, you've created a lot of choices for yourself. So when it comes time to make a choice, you can be like, oh my gosh, which one of these? I don't want to rule anything out. I want to have them all. But in the doing of that, you get stuck. And then it's like you're spinning your wheels in the muck. You're getting deeper and deeper and you're not moving. And for power, you need to be moving. You need to make a choice and get your butt going as quick as possible because that's how power works. I don't know if we talked about it, but for you, it's like leapfrog through life. So you okay. make a choice, you leap forward fast, and then you pause and you evaluate. Is this working for me? Am I happy? If it's working, great, keep going. If it's not working though, look around, make a new choice and get moving. So the thing okay. about the choices is that when you get in that place of being stuck and you don't know which one you want to make because you don't want to rule anything out, pick the one that is most appealing. And if none of them are, flip a coin and just do something because okay. you don't want to be stuck. That's the worst thing for you. And I know you've done a lot of that lately and I'm so happy and excited for you because you've made some big choices and you've made some big leaps and you are now starting to see the payoff. So this is validation for you right? Of how you're wired. Do more of that. You're a fabulous okay. manifester when you're in alignment. So stay in alignment by moving, getting the energy going, getting out there, inspiring people. You have the ability to inspire with your words. So speaking is fabulous for you, which I know you do. You've got yeah. great intuition. Use it. Allow it. If you're talking to somebody and maybe you get this little visual in your head while you're talking to them, and you don't think anything about it. I want you to know, not everybody gets that. That's a thing that happens with power. When it comes, you're supposed to share it with that person. That's why you got it. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Because I've just seen a lot of this more now. Yeah. Now I, yeah. So if you get those little visuals and you don't share them, then you're not allowing your gift to flow through you and to bless other people. Right. right. But you don't know that until you learn about it. And right. I know often what happens is that you'll get that little picture and you won't connect it to, oh, I'm supposed to share it. 
And maybe you think everybody gets that, and no, they don't. It's something that power gets. So when it comes, just share it. And then don't worry about what they do with it. That's none of your business. You are sharing it, and they get to choose what they do with it. Awesome. So it's like planting seeds. They might not use it today, but it'll be there. And in the future, they'll pick it up. It's like when we did your reading. That was planting some big seeds, but you didn't use it all. So here you come again, and now you're ready to do some fertilizer and, and start growing your, yourself, right? Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly it. That's so awesome. Yeah. So go back and revisit that audio, because I'll bet you will hear things that will just click today that they didn't click before because you weren't ready to hear them yet. Okay. Yeah. Because when we do those readings, it's like open up the floodgates and all this stuff comes pouring in and only some of it processes in the moment, which is why it's good to go back and revisit those audios down the road because new things will pop out at you that you didn't notice before. Right. I don't know if I had the audio because we were on the phone. Um, but I, maybe maybe you sent it in like Messenger or something. I can... I can look. Send me an email if you don't find it, and I'll look in my archives and see if I can find it. Okay. Okay. Awesome. awesome. Thanks, Kim. Yeah. Okay, so, Synthora, I'm just going to see if I can find you and unmute you, or you can unmute yourself. How about that? You want to talk a little bit more about your gift of truth and how you can use it in your life. Yeah. Did, can you hear me? Yes, I hear you fine. So tell me about what's been going on. Um, I, you know, I have gone back and read uh, the information that you sent and I still, I guess, trying to process what it really means and how do you utilize it in your life? Is it job? Is it work? Is it just as a person or yeah. So if you can expand a little bit more on that. Sure. It's everything, right? Because it's who you are. It's how you're wired. It's how you relate to the world. It's about how you function in the world. So your truth, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you said that. So for you, it's, you go out and you see things, and especially injustice, for truth, injustice just hurts their soul, and they have to speak out about it. But do it in a way that people can hear you, because that's when you get into that energetic feedback loop that feeds your soul. So truth sometimes is a little bit undiplomatic, and they just, well, they'll see it and they'll blurt it out. And then people will sometimes just close down because it's uncomfortable. They don't want to hear it. So your challenge is figuring out, how do I share this big truth that I just got? Because you're a channel. How do I share this truth with people so that they will get it and they will act upon it or at least consider it and do something? So that's a huge challenge for you. And I encourage you to find somebody to role play with so that you can go back over situations where you have found yourself speaking and being shut down because that's the worst thing for truth. When they get shut down, it, it sucks. They don't like it. And then that causes them to not want to speak, right? Mm -hmm. Which is, you know, contrary to what you're trying to accomplish. So if you can role play with somebody, figure out how you could have said it better. What words could you have added to make it a little softer? You still tell the truth but you tell it in a way that they will hear it and take some action on it because that's what it's all about. And for you also getting out and speaking would be really good if you feel motivated to do that. But you can also tell your truth through visuals, through images and the work that you're doing with your screenplays. That is another way of expressing truth and getting it out into the world. For you, you want to do both. You want to use your voice and you want to use your, your voice and the writing as well. If you want to do any kind of art, that would be good for you. You just need to be creative and express yourself. If you're not doing that, your energy is blocked. And then that stops those manifestations because it's like you closed the doors and you said, hey, we're not open for business today. Does that make sense? It does. It, you mentioned how, well, in the readings anyway, it says visual sometimes ends up being a form only if you're sort of shut down from speaking. Um, so is pursuing it through a visual medium then not as strong as doing it verbally or? No, ideally you do both. 
Okay. Right? Because it's a it's more ways to get your truth out to the world. Okay. And your truth meaning what you see as a truth or yes yes it's your truth because you are channeling it right you have that divine channel going on and you're getting these downloads of truth and you may not feel it like dumping information into you you may just like you look around and you see something you see it differently than other people do because your eyes see truth in a way that other people don't it's like for me i see energy in a way that other people don't it's part of my gift mm -hmm. so because you're wired to see truth you may feel it, you may mm -hmm. see it. it, you know, it can come in any of the sensory ways, but just understand that the way you're perceiving reality is mm -hmm. different than the way people who are not truth are perceiving it. And mm -hmm. so the gift is then when you see injustice or things that need to be called out, step up and say something. And I think with your writing, that is a way to do the same thing. You can do it metaphorically through you know storytelling whatever it is that you're choosing to do there but it's another way to get your truth out into the world and it's a subtle way of doing it rather than hitting people over the head by blurting out you know you suck you can share something in a story that will resonate and plant seeds with people because that's ultimately what we're all doing with our gifts we're out there sharing whatever our superpower our genius is with the world in our own special way and we're planting those seeds. And when they take root and we get to see that, that feeds our soul. That's our validation that, yeah, we matter and we count and we are living our purpose. Because it's not enough just to do it for ourselves. We have to do it and share it with other people. That expands it. And in the doing, we also learn more about ourselves. For instance, not long ago, I was out to dinner with my family and I'm watching the waitress and I can see she's brand new on the job. She's like a, a you know, a long tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs, nervous. And they were making some unkind remarks. And I think she heard them about her being slow and clumsy and what have you. And when she left, I said, guys, give her a break. She's brand new on the job. She's really nervous and you're not making it any better. And they all looked at me and they said, how do you know that? And it hit me. Oh my gosh, I'm reading that. They're not. That's part of my gift. And it helped me to see a different facet of the way my gift worked. It's always been there. It's, that's just normal for me. So I never knew it was something special. And that's for all of us. That's why it's so interesting to learn about your gift and then experience it through other people's eyes because suddenly you'll get a whole different flavor and then you'll appreciate it and you'll use it more. But the thing is, if you don't get out there and interact with people and use it, you won't get that feedback and you won't get that experience. Mm -hmm. okay. so what have you done differently since we talked? Because for you, it's going to be about taking new action. Um, I've been working on my screenplay. I have, have I done anything different? I wouldn't, I know I'm still pursuing it. Um, yeah, nothing different. I would say, um, so that's something you need to work on. What can you do different? Talk mm -hmm. to different people, go to different places. Step out of your comfort zone because mm -hmm. when we talked, you were very much ensconced in that comfort zone. It's like you had cocooned yourself in your mm -hmm. apartment, right? And when you do that, your brilliance is cocooned with you. It's not out there impacting other people. So you have to get out and interact. Otherwise you're gonna feel frustrated you're not going to feel fulfilled. And you really have an amazing gift to share with the world. So I would encourage you, take baby steps, just mm -hmm. you know, one step out of the apartment a day, a little further each day, different places, that kind of thing. Experiment, have fun, try to mm -hmm. find fun things to do. Maybe you take your son and you go out and you do something new together. Maybe you just go play on the playground together. Things like that, very simple things mm -hmm. will shift you. And that's the case for all of us. When we get stuck, it's just a matter of stepping out and doing something different. If it's fun, that's even better. Do it for a little while and then go back to your comfort zone. That's okay. You don't have to stay out there until you feel like the sun is going to burn you up. Just a little bit at a time and just keep creeping out further and further, expanding your boundaries. And that will serve you very well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So anybody else questions, you can raise your hand or you can 
type of question? I'm not seeing any hands. If you wanted to talk, you can unmute yourself too, in case I don't see your hand. Okay, well, while you're thinking about it, let's take a, a, a tiny little break, and I want to tell you about this course that I have coming up called Rock Your Life. I did this last year after the book came out, and it's lessons based upon a lot of what's in the book, but the premise is, let's take your gifts, and we look at your life lesson. I think we also looked at soul specialty, I'm not sure, but we took who you are in a nutshell spiritually. And then we looked at what your blocks and restrictions are. What is keeping you from accomplishing your goals? Where are you stopped? And then we put those two things on the table and said, okay, how do you use your unique brilliance, your gifts, what's special about you to obliterate those obstacles so that you can move forward and rock your life? And we had such a ball. It was amazing. The, the shifting that I saw on the screen just in the matter of one session. We meet for four sessions. The first three are working through getting to know yourself and using your gift in a very conscious and positive way to get through those blocks and then to look at the goals and how are you gonna use your gift to get there. And then the, the final one, the fourth one, is just a celebration party because by then we've done the work and now we come together just to acknowledge what we've accomplished and to have a great time. And it was such a delight. I had one person who signed up to take it again because it, it was such a transformation for him, which is really cool. Elena, would you mind um, sharing your experience with Rock Your Life? Is it on mute? Yes, you're unmuted, I hear you. Okay, oh, I can never tell. Um, I think it, what, last year? I yeah, think it was. I think it was last January. Yeah. Something like that. Um, and I'm one of the, I'm very, even though I'm very intuitive and very psychic and I do this for a living, I'm very skeptical also, which kind of come, comes in handy. Um, so I wasn't really expecting a whole lot. And yet at the same time, when I look back over what happened last year, it was amazing on what I was able to accomplish, you know, getting out there and being seen, getting my YouTube videos up, getting um, a lot of podcast interviews, working some more on my book. And I don't think that would have happened without the group that we had because everybody was very supportive. You know, then when I got stuck, I had a whole bunch of help um, getting through some of that stuckness and pushing a little bit because I like to pull up to here in my apartment and kind of keep what I do secret. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, it, for me, it, it was it was great because I ended up doing a lot, uh, accomplishing a lot more in one year than I think I have in the whole 20 years I've been in business. That's awesome. Thank you. Well, I want to give credit to you because you were a fabulous contributor to the group. And there was one time when she led us in this beautiful prayer that was such a blessing. But you brought your energy and each person who comes does that. They bring their unique brilliance and energy to expand upon the experience for all of us. And it was just so marvelous. And watching you unfold like a flower to get past some of those blocks that have been, you know, causing you to stumble for a while was just, it was so brilliant and amazing and just blessed everybody. So I, I thank you for showing up and doing the work. And I'm so excited to see what you're creating this year because it's phenomenal. So thank you. Once I figure it out. Thanks. And you will, you're doing it a step at a time. And that's the thing, you know, it's not like you take this huge leap forward because you know, it's like these coaches who tell you, you can go create a six-figure business, but you're not making any money. Well, to go from zero to, you know, a six-figure business is not congruent. You have to go in stages. And when we do that, and we understand that, and we allow that, we go in those stages that are congruent and believable to us, then we get a lot more success and satisfaction 
And then we do eventually get to that big grand goal, whatever that may be. But we have to do it in stages. Otherwise, it's like trying to leap over a chasm that we just can't quite make. And then we fall down and then we get all discouraged and think it's something that we did wrong or that, you know, we're defective. And, you know, you get into all that self-blame and torture and that's just not productive. So if we do it in those baby steps and just a little bit more and a little bit more out of our comfort zone, then we're less likely to have that big crash that sets us back from where we were before we started. So thank you, Elena. I appreciate that. So let's see. That course is going to be starting um, in another week. So if you're interested in that, I'll be sending you the link and you can check that out. Enough with the commercial. So Galena, you had a question. Can Go you ahead. Hear? Yes, I hear yeah. you. Oh, well, I have no idea, guys, how does it work because I'm first time here. You're doing great. Okay, uh, yes, I had the question, how possible or what is the way to connect with the soul group? How to recognize them, they from my soul group? Um, I don't know what your soul group is because we haven't looked that up. I tell you what, are you going to be coming to the meetup group on the 28th? Uh, if you're going to send the, you know, invitation, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It's we're having our regular meetup group on the fourth Monday. If you do, I'll make a note to look that up for you, and then we can talk about it then. Because I don't know what it is right now, and and I don't want to interrupt the call to go do that research. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Yeah, awesome. So, Thank how you. are you doing otherwise? Well, I the most of the time I do meditations every single night but i'm trying to connect the people who is not here anymore mm -hmm. uh, so the point how can i find the proof what i'm connecting not to my brain this is the problem yeah that skepticism comes in right well it is but i'm blocking but uh the one thing sometimes they're not saying anything sometimes i'm getting some answers and i wonder what i'm gonna do with this information so i constantly searching searching and searching the answers yes i'm like i don't know i'm like in the path of this searching my truth because i'm truth and power so i have no idea how to use it as well So it is hard. Yes, it's fighting with myself, who I am. And I also had the questions about like the person, who is the person? Uh, do we have conscience and we have a soul? Or how does it work? How can I understand we connecting to higher self, but this who is the higher self? How are you getting the answers from the higher selves? Because I did have the answers. Or it was just intuition. I just got lost. Yeah, I think because you are truth and you are a natural channel, probably what you're getting is from your guides. And some of the things you've shared with me certainly sounds like it is. So I would encourage you to stop being so skeptical and just allow for the fact that they are communicating with you and if the messages are positive and uplifting and they are helping you in your life then they're most likely from your guide so can you accept that uh yes uh, i accept it but i want to know what is the difference between uh well uh the last time of meditation it was i had two answers one from one kind of person whatever it is and second i got from another one i will explain you probably in the class because it's kind of very hard to explain the one kind of person telling me one thing and well, I guess she, she told me uh, the second person of part of me doesn't want to tell me the details. 
So I have to talk as a kind of representative of myself and said I had no um, no problem with this kind of half of myself. And then when I did it, I got the completely answer. So I'm getting information from two different sides of me. This is why I want to know what there is and how the human, uh, what human has it. I mean, I know I'm in the ego and I do have a body, but we have a soul and we have, I guess, mind. Why am I getting some part of information from the soul and from some part of information from the mind? How possible it is? Well, I the mind is about your ego, right? So before well, we shifted into an awareness of our souls, we were all ego-based and that was running our lives. But now we've come into this place of awareness of ourselves as soul beings, that there's more to us than just our ego. And so we're stepping up into a grander life experience than ego, which just wants to keep us safe until we die, right? It wants to hold us back. Ego doesn't like it when you step forward and you take chances and you learn and grow, which is what soul is wanting to do. Uh, so you mean the information, details of this information, my actually ego didn't want to tell me the answers, right? Was blocking the answer. Yeah. But my soul was representing information as she want to tell me and advise me, but my brain since it belongs to my body, so it's mean ego, uh, want to just protect me. Yeah, that's all ego wants to do. And so it will chatter in your ear and it will tell you that when you hear these messages that you're just making it all up because it wants to keep you from going into that expansion and learning and growing. That's why if what's coming through is positive and uplifting, go with it. If it's negative, it's probably your ego. And just well, say, you know, thanks, but no thanks. We're not doing that today. Well, it wasn't positive and uh, negative. It was, you know, like, like a lawyer asking the question, it's not the positive or negative. This is like, uh, since I have like, I belong to the part of the power and truth. Yes, it doesn't, mean, it doesn't matter for me, positive or negative. I just want to. Thank you. We're losing you. Your your signal's breaking up. I I'm getting closer. What I was thinking. Okay, I'm gonna mute you, Galena, because your your signal broke up, and we're not hearing what you're saying. All right. But I would encourage you just to keep listening and run it through your your solar plexus compass to see how it feels and if it feels good go with it right try it and see what happens if it turns out that you're getting something and you act upon it and you didn't like the results then don't do it again that's how you can test it but when it comes from your guides it's usually going to be something that's uplifting and it's helping you to learn and grow it's never going to tell you what to do and it's never going to be something that's against your own best interest because they're all about lifting us up and, and helping us, loving and blessing. Hope that makes sense. So, um, Kim, you had posted something. I can't tell if you were looking for an answer or you're just making a comment. Was there something more you wanted to say about that? Um. Oh, no, I was just making a comment in response to a question. Okay. Yeah, that was it. Okay, thanks. <laughs> so, Cheryl, our personal and business life, we have positive energy and results from the universe come slowly. Boy, don't they sometimes? Yeah, something holding us back from success. So, in favor of environment tree planting and sustainable life designers. I'm assuming that means that's what you do. You want to be seen by more people. Let's 
give me just a minute to see if I understand this. Cheryl, can you speak? Um, can you unmute yourself and speak? And then maybe I'll understand what you're saying better. Go ahead. Yes, hi, Deborah. Sorry for speaking up in, <laughs> we are on speaking. behalf of uh, my wife, Cheryl. I'm Roland. Yeah, uh, hi, Roland. Chair, my eight year old daughter is between us here. Um, we have found out about you through Jennifer Riley's last one of her last summits and no, we have, Corda. Corda. anyway sorry I, I messed up it was someone else but nearly at the same time uh, doesn't matter we would really like to have a reading with you otherwise but it has yet to come so here we are with our question uh, partially typed up and perhaps partially uh, clarified in words so for about 10 years now we have lived an increasingly more and more spiritual aware conscious ecologically definitely conscious life and um, we started establishing our uh, entrepreneurship on this basis to that uh, we would like to help others see faster and get the results faster than we have had the chance to get because we had to go it the slow um, the slow, route. slow route yeah and find it out for ourselves and um, our calling as a couple would be to help as many people as possible anywhere in the world live a sustainable life and uh, the problem we have run into for a number of years now is that as if the universe didn't quite get of course this <laughs> makes no sense for spiritual uh, beings like you and uh, i don't mean to use any accusation here towards the universe how would i could i but uh, nonetheless that's how it comes across that something either in our Akashic records individually or together as a couple uh, holds us back or whether there is a spell on us. Or some subconscious memories from our childhood that's not allowing us to progress. We feel like we have come across a lot of epigenetic muck on either side and together combined so we are doing fairly well on that. I'm sure there's a lot more to overcome, but time will cure that too. However, in business, to get to financially rewarding results, we would love to uh, feel like the universe is with us too and kind of uh, reveals, pulls off the veil from us here in a remote village of northern Romania. We don't expect to be seen, you know, physically as much as we would like to be more seen online. And we are making our own uh, opening efforts. We could perhaps do it more effectively, efficiently, but um, could you see through the ether <laughs> what might be blocking us in a nutshell? If yeah. So please share it with us. Thank you. Sure. In a nutshell, marketing online is really hard. So that's not specific to you. That's everybody. It's a challenge. There is one soul group that actually does well online naturally, but the rest of us, it's a struggle. So just know that. As far as karmic blocks or you know, old things that are there from past lives. We all have those. And yeah, we can find them in readings and we can clear them and answer those questions. However, lots of people never have a reading and they somehow manage to get past it and thrive. So here's what I want you to understand. Divine says to us, all you have to do is come here, have your human experience, look for expansion of your consciousness and have fun. Do what feeds your soul. Those are the only directions we've gotten. We humans have gotten into this place of shooting on ourselves about we should do this and we should do that and all these responsibilities. That's not what divine is telling us. We can choose responsibilities, of course, and we can take on a lot of garbage. 
that isn't even ours, but we can also choose to let it go. So what I would say for your business that might be helpful, use that attitude of, I'm doing this because it feeds my soul. So find a way to craft your business so that it feeds your soul, so that it brings you so much joy that it, your energy comes into alignment with your soul, right? Because when you're out there doing something that brings you all that joy, it feeds your soul, it brings you into alignment, your clarity then will open up, you'll have greater vision. In that state, you will be more open to seeing the breadcrumbs that your guides are scattering all over the place that you're just not seeing right now. Because when we're in this place of confusion and fear and panic even, which happens, you know, when you don't have enough money to pay your bills at the end of the month, you can go into fear and panic. And then it doesn't feel good. It throws you even further out of alignment, which creates more of that kind of energy instead of saying, okay, I'm going to trust the universe is going to help me figure this out. I'm going to stay calm. I'm going to stay centered. I'm going to stay focused on doing things that feed my soul and doing things that I enjoy that are blissful. And when you stay in that state, you open up the doors for the manifestations. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So your positive intention goes out there. It's like waves of energy off of you when you're in alignment and you're doing what feeds your soul. And that attracts those to you who want what you have to offer. That's something all of us can do right now. The trick is, of course, we start doing it and it feels good and then we fall off the horse and we go back into panic, right? Because it's not something we've practiced very much. So many of us here on the earth have been in that place of lack and fear and panic for so long that it's really hard to get on that horse and stay on that horse. And that's okay too. Forgive yourself, get back up, do it again. And you'll find over time, the more that you repeat that, the longer you stay on each time. And you're working together as a couple so you can help correct each other, you know, because sometimes what will happen is we'll fall off the horse, we'll get out of alignment, but we don't realize it because it's such a natural feeling because we've done it so many times before that we just stay there in that mud puddle and we don't realize we've fallen off in a mud puddle. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, wow here I am in the mud puddle, what am I doing? Let's get up and get going. So the two of you together can help each other to see it sooner when you fall off your horse, if that makes sense. Yeah. Synergies sometimes work uh, together in the negative yeah. realm too. So when one of us is blue, feels blue, then the other one tends to feel blue too. So it doesn't always neutralize. Right. So the other can get up and do a boogie and, and cheer them up and get yeah. them out of that faster. Yeah. Because the quicker we get out of that place of doubt and fear and doubt, darkness, the quicker we get back into the alignment where the manifestations can come to us. Because, you know, they're all lined up out there waiting. We've asked for them. Source is delivered. They're just waiting to come through our blocks. So getting rid of those blocks is about finding that place where you're just in a state of bliss because you're doing what you were created to do, right? Okay. You're using your gift to help people. And there are some people I've met who've actually stumbled into their gift without understanding exactly what they were doing. They just got there. Maybe they were further advanced than us energetically um, on our frequency. But for whatever reason, they found it on their own without help. The rest of us, we get a reading and we figure out what our gift is and then we can start using it. So it doesn't matter how you get there. It just matters that you're focused on getting there because it's, it's our journey, right? We're always getting on that path and moving forward. And then we get there and it feels good. Keep moving. Look for the next challenge and the next exciting thing that's going to come your way because when you're in that space, you're going to attract more wonderful opportunities. And be open to your business morphine. Because what happens with a business is we sometimes get tunnel vision. This is what I'm going to do, and, and we get moving. But it turns out maybe it's not quite in alignment with our soul. So if we are open to shifting slightly, changing, adjusting, and allowing the business to grow with us, then it can be a lot more successful. So your business in five years may look totally different. Just be open to allowing it to evolve as your needs and your wishes evolve. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Anything else? Um, that was it. We'll get back to you with a birthday reading request. <laughs> right. yeah. Perfect. So let's see. That was Cheryl. So Leon. You would like something. Oh, your name is Carla. I'm sorry. I see that at the end there. So Carla would like to know if her guides have anything to say. So let's just ask the guides if they have anything. I'm seeing something that's like this big, you know, like an ink blob, ink blob, like this big black blob in front of me, and it's obscuring my vision. So I'm waiting to see, is the ink going to move? Oh, <laughs> they're saying go around it, dummy. No, not dummy, that's bad. Just go around it. Why are you standing there staring at an ink blob when if you look to either side, there's plenty of room, you can just walk around it. So, okay, let's walk around it. Oh, wow. So on the other side is this beautiful vista. The sun is shining. There's a little brook. The air is sweet. The birds are singing. It is so beautiful on this side. Why did I stay on the other side so long? Wow. All I had to do was make a simple shift, change a direction, be open to stepping off the path that I had this tunnel vision about, making a slight change, and oh my gosh, look how my world changed. So let me know, Carla, does that make sense? Okay, so while I'm waiting to hear from you, Carla, Denise had a question. So Denise, you must have had um, readings from a couple of different people who were doing the same modality and you got told different gifts. That does happen, and here's the reason. You have a reading, you learn what your gift is. And then for some reason, you go to another person and you get the same type of reading. What happens is it's almost like you're challenging the universe. Is this really who I am? Prove it to me. And because of that intentional energy, you will very often get a different gift because you put that energy out there. It's not that the person reading you got something wrong. You, just like that black blob I was seeing, you put an obscurity there that shifted the energy that made it difficult for them to do an accurate reading. So once you've gotten that reading, go with it. Providing, of course, it feels right. I mean, once in a while, somebody will get something wrong. And that's human nature. But if it feels right, go with it. Don't question it. Use it, expand, and experience that gift. So you were told in your first reading, it looks like, that you are order and self-expression. So those felt accurate to you. And then you, was it the second reading where you got truth? Let me know about that. Can you unmute yourself and, and tell me about that? Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Go ahead. Um, I got divine order and divine truth as my primary and secondary okay. in my first reading and divine self-expression and divine truth is my primary and secondary in my second reading. Okay. So tell me, think back to who you were before you had your reading. What would be something that you criticized yourself for that you considered a shortcoming? Before I had my first reading? Yeah, because you've shifted since you had your readings. So what's something that you used to criticize yourself for a lot? Um, I think just the way I express myself okay. and, and how I could be not quite so um, blunt. Yeah, that's the truth part of you. Did you also find that you were very energetically sensitive and if people were having uh, conflicts and arguments that you just wanted to run away, you didn't want to be there? That's always. Okay. Oh That's a hallmark of divine order. So I'm going with your first reader got it right. You are order and you are truth because you've expressed the, the truth aspect there as well. 
So go with those, allow them to expand. Did you uh, try using the zip up tool to help you with that sensitivity? Oh yes, I used, I've known Perfect. about it for years. Perfect, so do that. Use that to protect yourself so that you can get out and be with people because as we, we mentioned earlier, you don't wanna lock yourself away and be a hermit because then you're not expressing your gift and you're not living in the life that you came here to live. So for you, you wanna bring peace and beauty and order into your life as much as you can. You want to look for ways to express yourself artistically. Do you do anything artistic now? Oh yes. Perfect, so do more of that. And then when you feel compelled to speak truth about something, do it. Just try to do it in a diplomatic fashion. Because I don't know if you were here earlier or not, but I was talking to another person about how when truth speaks, they're often very blunt. And people may not listen to them, which is very frustrating and doesn't feed their soul. So if you can find a way to say things in a, maybe softer words, but still saying the truth. It's not like you're hiding the truth. You're just saying it in a way that the words will resonate and you will be heard. If you can do that, that will help you an awful lot. So you've got an artistic piece of you, both in order and truth. So it's really important for you to express that artistic side of yourself. You are helping other people to bring order into their lives. Whether that's literal like organization or whether it's just, you know, putting things together in a way that just makes their life work better for them. So people with order are very good at, at being planners, project managers. They, they're great at that, bookkeepers, that kind of thing. People with order, some of them even love to balance their checkbooks because just bringing order to something feels so good to them. So those are all aspects. Does that help? Yes. So you're saying that our divine gifts are the same throughout our lives. They don't change. We don't have bits of divine gifts, all the divine gifts within us. Yeah, we have all, there are eight. We have all eight of them, but we have them in smaller proportion to the one that's our primary and if we have a secondary into those okay. two. So what happens is here we are, source is creating us as a soul. So let's say source dips a, a bucket full of, of soul energy out of that big soul ocean. And here you are, and source is cooking you up like a recipe. And so here's a dollop of order, and here's a dollop of truth. And then you get the rest, but you know, in smaller increments. Which is why we're all working to help each other, because you are an expert at truth and order, but I am not. And so you can help me to find that small amount of it in myself and to bring it out. And that's what we're all doing in our own way. So you get that at the time of creation. It stays with you through every incarnation. It's always there because it's how your soul is wired. So okay. I hope that makes sense. And the, there are some things that do change, like we'll choose different lessons for each lifetime, but there are other things that are just part of our blueprint that will just always be there. So through each of our incarnations, what we're doing is we are learning how to express our gifts more fully each time. So, you know, in days gone by, past incarnations, we couldn't be seen as, as light workers. many of us. We were killed for our gifts. And that is slowly changing. So now we're in a place where many, many light workers are finally coming out of hiding because now we can. We are shifting into a, a new, more enlightened age. And that's a lot of what we're feeling with these shifting energies and that eclipse energy and the things that people were talking about earlier. Make sense? Thank you. Yeah, that brought a lot of light to a lot of different questions. Perfect. Okay, awesome. I'll mute you. And so, Marisa, you want to know if your guides have anything to share with you. So go ahead and unmute yourself, and I'll just ask them. I'm seeing this blue sky with these beautiful white fluffy clouds that reminds me of your book. And it's like that lovely, uplifting, loving energy. And it's like, oh, it's like you're floating on a cloud. I don't know if you feel that way right now, but that's the energy that they're sending you. That's the love. It's like, Marisa, we've got your back. You are floating on a cloud, baby. 
You don't have to worry. Keep moving forward. In fact, you don't even have to worry about moving forward because the cloud is being propelled for you. You don't even have to do that. You just go with the flow and allow all of your love and light to come out and be shared with the world because that's what you're about. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I've been feeling that from the new year, just a real shift in, in the energy within myself and where I'm, the direction I'm going in. So it feels great. Perfect. Awesome. Anything else? No, that was great affirmation. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Glad to do it. Okay, so Elena, what do you guys have to share with you? Okay, your guides are always talking up storms. So who knows? Let's just see what they got to say. You can unmute yourself if you want. <laughs> I'm hearing Native American music and it's like it's a powwow and drums are beating and the energy is very happy. It's very energetic, uplifting energy. It's, it's like a celebration. Oh, oh wow. I just got hit in the, the heart chakra. It's coming home, Elena. That's what it feels like. It's a celebration because you've come home. I want to cry. <laughs> It's so beautiful. Oh, wow. Very powerful. They have been waiting for you for so long. And it's like, come on, honey, please come home. We miss you. We want you to be with us. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Anything else about that? Oh, they're funny. <laughs> yeah. And I think I saw Coco Pelli, so you know what that means. Uh-huh. <laughs> like I said, they're funny. Yes. Always. Okay. okay, thanks. You're welcome. So, Carla, you said the dog started barking. Um, yeah, what they were saying is that it's like you have tunnel vision. All you can see is that big blob in front of you. And so you think that you don't have anywhere to go. You're just stuck looking at that blob. In reality, there are choices all around you. So close your eyes and feel your way through. Because if you're looking with your eyes, you're seeing the block. But if you close your eyes and you tune into your gifts, your intuitive gift, because I can feel you have a strong one, feel your way like a blind person, right? Feel your way around that blockage. When you get to the other side, it's going to be marvelous. You are gonna hear the birds singing and the sun shining. It's gonna feel wonderful because you escaped what was blocking you. Let me know if that makes sense. Oh, so Joel already left us. Thank you, Joel. I so appreciate having you here. Have a great time at your Tai Chi class. All right, so Althea, what do your guides have to share with you? I'm seeing this big bloom of, it's kind of like a tangerine orange, so it's a light orange. And it has um, an Asian feel to it, like Chinese. It's, it's like a, not a kimono, but like a, a, a Chinese um, tapestry or something. Some big piece of fabric with this, this orange design on it. I don't know if that means something to you. Let's see if anything else comes. It, it's kind of blossoming. So to me, that's, that's about you stepping out and blossoming and stepping into your gift because it feels like you were kind of closed up before. The energy felt a little tight and, and closed up. And they're beaming all this love right into your heart chakra so that it can bloom, so that you can step into your gift and start sharing it with the world because it's great to have it and understand it for yourself, but until you share it, you don't get the fullness of your gift. And the thing about this, Althea, is that sharing your gift with other people isn't even for them. It's for you. It blesses you when you share it with them. The fact that it blesses them is just an extra added benefit. 
because it's all about you. What serves you and what helps you to live as this awakened, empowered soul that you crave to be? So let me know if that makes sense. Okay. So now I'm getting the same question from everybody. So we're just going to go through them all. I got to wipe my eyes. You broke me up here, Elena. I wish I could show you exactly what I saw because it was just so marvelous. But I think maybe you got it. Okay, so Synthura, what do your guides have to share? I'm getting this blotch of green. It's like um, like shamrock green, I think. And it's it's weird. It's kind of, it's like this big, long, rectangular, ragged-ended shape with another one underneath it, but offset, which is really strange. I don't know what that is. It may be connected to your art, but green is often connected to heart chakra, so it's probably about opening up and sharing your gift with the world more than you have been doing. Oh, okay, so it's connected to that sharp edge green thing because when you do it and you share your truth with people, it's going to feel prickly. It's going to feel jagged and ragged, right? Because sometimes the truth is just uncomfortable, even if you do work at making it pretty. And so when you go out there, just know that and accept it and don't worry about it. Do the best you can. Lean on your guides and let them help you to craft that truth, but keep speaking it. It feels like, you know, like you're like that, like you're, you know, blocked off and you're not speaking. And so it, it's trying to flow out from around you, but it really needs to, more voice needs to come out. So I hope that makes sense. Let me know. Marie, okay. So Marie. I'm seeing this little dog. It's this black curly haired dog and like, kind of like a Pomeranian that's jumping up and down on your leg, trying to get your attention. And the weird thing is it's, it's, it's silent. It's not barking. It's got these big eyes that are just pleading with you. Marie, notice me. I'm here. Help me. I need you. I don't know if that means something to you. Let's see if anything else comes. It's a female dog. And now she went over and laid down on a little bed because she's feeling this heartache that she can't get through to you. Oh, Marie, do you have a, a dog in spirit like that? That's trying to connect with you maybe? That's kind of what it feels like. Let me know. Uh, I did have a dog that passed, uh, I guess, um, maybe 10 years ago. Uh, it was a male dog, and he was small, uh, gray, light gray. Is it possible that might be... This feels different. No, it feels okay. like more energy. Hmm. Maybe somebody you knew had a dog like this that connected with you, and because you have a psychic ability, it's, it's trying to come through you to them. Have you ever thought about being an animal communicator? No, I never have. Hmm, maybe. Because <laughs> okay. it, it's a very unusual kind of vision. Yes. From what I normally get. So there's something special about that. And it just kind of feels like, oh, yeah, of course. She couldn't speak because she wants you to be her voice. Hmm. Animal communicator. Think about that. Okay. Feels like you're being thank called. You. Yeah. Really? Okay, let, thank you. Let me know. I want to know how that turns out. Okay. So Carly, you're good. Um, Kim, what do your guides have to share? Well, I'm seeing all these baby colors, <laughs> of course, right? And it's like they're little, little, you know, little tassel balls, these tiny little tassel balls different colors, like blue and orange and, and pink and green, and they're bouncing up and down. It's like they're doing a dance. 
I don't know what that means yet. We'll see. Yeah, it's just a very happy energy. And so it feels like validation for you that you are on the right path. You have made these choices that have led you to this place where you're at now, that you are feeling this tremendous happiness that these little bouncing balls represent. So this feels like affirmation for you to keep going. Keep, oh yeah, of course, because power and, and movement, right? Don't stay still, keep moving. That's what it's tied into. I hope that makes sense, let me know. And then um, it's like Cam, getting stuck with your career, and what do your guides have to say? Can you unmute yourself and tell me uh, about the career? Hi, can you hear me now? Yes, I hear you. Oh, hi, hi, nice to meet you. Um, uh, I've, I've been doing this job. I actually like my job. It's, uh, it's for the art school, but I've been doing for 20 years and um and lately i felt like um i've been also doing uh i, I follow a coach training entirely and uh, i feel like i'm feeling that i can do something more in like like a hero but i'm just feeling so not um ready for for it so um but I, at the same time i feel very stuck with the work that i'm doing at the school so Okay. That's my question. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just see what your guys have. And it's Cam, right? It's Cam. Yes, yeah, Cam Y. Yeah, it feels very stuck. Like, you know, lifting your feet is this huge effort. It's like something weighing down on you, very heavy, and, and it's holding you there. And and it's, it's like heavy on your chest too. So it's almost, oh my gosh, it's like you're being flattened by this big iron, right? It's just flattening you down. So how do you feel about yourself? Do you feel good about yourself? Uh, I do actually, um, but at the same time, I do feel uh, like, most of the time at art at this world um so yeah okay so what's coming is this is an illusion for some reason you have bought into this illusion about who you are and what you're doing that is not true and that's mm -hmm. that iron that's holding you down and so just like that black blob earlier all you have to do is realize that it's an illusion and throw it off and stand up already Stop lying down and letting people walk all over you because that's not what you came here to do. You came here to have this blissful, amazing experience and to share your light with the world in whatever way you choose. So I would say a little time with some healing meditation would be helpful. And if you can do a visualization where you see that thing being lifted off of you and you getting up and walking out into the bright sunlight and dancing and singing and expressing your, your joyous, soulful self, that would be really helpful for you. Okay, well, Make thank that. you. Yeah, you're yeah. welcome. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so we have a hand raised here. I've unmuted you. Oh, no, I haven't yet. There you are, muted. So the 3977? Yes, I'm sorry, Sherry, again, I'm sorry. I, um, I wanted to ask you, too, uh, if, if there's something, what do my guys want me to know most of all right now? Okay. And I, also, I've just been feeling, I, I feel good, but I've been feeling sick from time to time, and it, it feels like it's something coming more from spiritual than physical. Does that make sense? Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me see what they have to say. Yeah, for you, I'm getting this big white balloon, and it's it's like it's a bloated balloon, and it's just kind of listing back and forth, and oh, it's making me dizzy. Wow. Um, so it's like stopped up, right? It's because it's you know it's twisted in a knot at the top, and the air can't get out, and it's, so it's very blocked, and it's very frustrating, and it's being suppressed. So it's like you're inside this balloon, and you're wanting to get out, and the darn it it's not even like a protective bubble because it's it's opaque you can't see through it so you're blind and you're disempowered mm -hmm. and you're stuck in this big balloon so your guides are saying hey sherry psst, 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 look 
here's a needle. Pop it already. Get out of the balloon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. You know, it's like the feeling is, hey, the solution is very simple. You're making it overly complicated. Take okay. the shortcut. There is no shame ever in taking the shortcut. The guides will tell you, why are you making things so hard on yourself? If you mm -hmm. see the shortcut and it works for you, go do it. Why are you punishing yourself by doing things the hard way? That's just, it doesn't have to be that way. So lighten okay. up all and go out there and be your joyous self. Have a great time. Okay. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Debbie, you have been totally silent up there. Do you have anything you want to add? Are you with us? I think your picture is just frozen. Okay. All right. I don't see any more hands raised. Oh, you have to go. Okay. Thanks, Marisa. So glad you joined us. It was a delight. All right. Well, we're getting close to two hours. So if there's no more questions, I think what I'm going to do is shift into that meditation I promised you. Is that okay with everybody? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Awesome. All right. So as I said, this one just came last night and it was specially for this call, which is really cool when you think about it. You know, how special does that make you feel? Let me try and get my windows arranged so I can see you and it. All right, so while you're waiting for me to organize here, why don't you just sit back and get comfy? Take a couple of deep breaths. Close your eyes if you haven't already. And then just go into normal breathing. Focus on that breathing. On the inhale. And the hold. And then the exhale. And if you find that your thoughts start to stray, it's okay. Just go back to focusing on your breathing. It's all good. No stress or strain, just allow this experience. Let everything fall away. Feel the collective energy of this group as we are lifted up to connect with the Akashic realm. Now with your eyes closed, you find yourself standing in this park-like place. The sun is shining warmly upon you. The grass is brilliant green, and it feels wonderful like a cushion under your feet. Wiggle your toes. Just revel in that lovely feeling, cushiony grass. And maybe it tickles you as it pops up between your toes. There's a lovely, gentle breeze that just caresses your face. You lean back and you gaze up at the sky. And as you do that, your mouth reflexively opens wide. And you shift into a state of receiving. As you process that thought, a viscous liquid energy begins pouring right down into your throat. And it's pouring and down and keeps going and it's filling you up. And it continues for some time, filling and filling until you are so full that it overflows coming out of your eyes and your nose and your ears. It's everywhere. Abundance. So much abundance that your vessel cannot contain it all. Now you may think 
being filled to overflowing is wasteful. No, my dear, that is lack mentality. Let it go. The universe is abundant. There is an unceasing flow available to you always. It is you who cuts it off during times of panic and fear. In those moments when you realize what has happened, stop, breathe, relax. Allow it to move freely once more. Everything you need is available to you. It always was. You just couldn't see it in your state of panic. Because when you focus upon fear and panic, what you get is more fear and panic. Do you see? Notice that the viscous liquid is even on the bottoms of your feet. And now that you notice that, it's also quite sticky. You become aware of a lovely bench sitting under a large maple tree, and you decide to go sit down and contemplate your sticky feet. As you walk over there, bits of grass and dirt are clumping to the bottoms of your feet. But you try to ignore that for the moment because you're anxious to see what comes next. As you sit on the bench, you notice a figure approaching. It may be an angel, may be a guide, it may be someone else. If you can't see the features clearly, don't worry, it's not important. Accept and allow them to appear as they choose. They have come to assist you. In fact, they have come to wash your feet. Now this wonderful, beneficent presence is carefully removing the clumps and the sticky substance, thoroughly cleansing all traces of that sticky substance away from your feet. As you observe in a state of deep appreciation, you suddenly understand. This is about washing away old traumas which had adhered to your energy body. And it was slowing your progress. This is a spiritual renewal and cleansing. With so much love and care, layer upon layer is removed. When your feet are completely cleaned, out comes a big fluffy towel to thoroughly dry them. Bask in the feeling of being loved and pampered. Sit back. Allow yourself to be ministered to without protesting. It's part of your spiritual growth to gratefully accept without objection. Remember, allow. After the cleansing, you and your friend sit together on that bench, contemplating life. From this perspective, 
you are able to look down and observe humanity hustling and bustling to and fro. Your cleansing has resulted in deeper clarity and vision. Looking down at those people, you wonder, why are they all in such a hurry? Don't they realize they create more angst for themselves when they engage with that frenetic energy? It's like saying to the universe, yes, I want more chaos and strife. You will remember this understanding in the days to come. As your ruminations turn towards your own life experience, you realize you are the conductor of your train. You get to set the speed at which you travel. So it might be wise to take it back a notch or two so that you might enjoy the scenery along the way. When you are whizzing by at full speed, you miss the delights, not to mention the breadcrumbs your guides have carefully set out for you. No wonder you feel like your head is spinning. Your poor eyes haven't a chance to clearly focus upon the sights at this speed. With your eyes still closed, hold your hand up in front of your face. Really look at it. Isn't it a marvel? The way it's constructed, the way it functions, the strength, the dexterity. For something relatively small, it serves a mighty big purpose. How about some appreciation for that hand and the other one too? Your entire body for that matter. It is a marvel in function and design. Yet most of the time you take it for granted. When you're doing those gratitude affirmations and journals, how about some love for your amazing hands, your body, and yourself? You are a marvel. Sure, Creator crafted all the parts and the interior design, but it is you who tested tweaked and modified to end up as the miraculous creation you are today, right now in this moment. You don't often give yourself credit for the wisdom, the lessons, the courage in venturing out of your comfort zone. These things are to be celebrated. Those pivotal moments in your journey that cause you to shift onto a new and better course. Recognizing and acting upon divine guidance. These are all reasons to celebrate you. The lessons you've learned, the way you transform lumps of coal into sparkling diamonds as you move triumphantly forward. Celebrate each and every milestone. As for those times you tripped and bruised yourself, take that lesson and leave the rest. It served its purpose. Let it go. Sorry for the doggy drinking. There are many wonderful adventures yet to come. Do not allow yourself to be tethered to past events which you call mistakes. That will lead to bringing more of the same into your experience. Why would you do that? Release them and allow new and exciting experiences to flow in. Recapture the joy, the wonder, and the delight that you felt as a child. That is your natural state of being. That is the state of flowing. Find something to delight in 
and allow it to expand. There is always something. It's in that deliberate reaching for a feeling state that you throw the doors wide open for more and better. What you focus upon expands. Do you want to focus on an ouchy skinned knee? Or do you want to focus upon all the ways that you are blessed? Focus upon blessings and you will have more blessings to focus upon. That is the wise choice of an empowered soul. More, you ask? Yes, there's always more. For now, pause, reflect, allow your awareness of how richly blessed you are to expand and for the blessings to multiply as surely as little rabbits will. Ah, fertility, that's a topic for another day. Go in peace and never forget you are forever and always wrapped in the loving arms of divine creator, for that is how very precious you are. The message has concluded. With your eyes still closed, wiggle your toes, wiggle your fingers. Allow yourself to come back to present awareness. And when you are ready, open your eyes. Okay, apologies for the doggy interruption. I guess she couldn't wait any longer. How's everybody feel? Is that good? Anna, when you're hungry, drink when you're thirsty. Wisdom of the dog and the natural world, fill your needs with love, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. You are welcome, Christine. I'm so delighted you were here. My name is Tarja. Tanya? Tarja. Like Maria, but with a T. Tarja. Oh, that's really cool. All right. Hang on. I'll see yeah. what your guys have to share with you, Tarja. Thank you. I get a very energetic sense of peace. And what I see is like this kind of a medium gray curtain so it's like a blank slate it's like waiting for you to create something does that make sense yes so it's just open for you to step forward with your brush and start painting it's this beautiful canvas it's very neutral which means you can take it in any direction you want it's totally open to your expression oh an expression that feels like you haven't been expressing yourself enough and they're encouraging you, step forward, Tarya. Express yourself because that's how you're able to share your gift with the world and that's how you will find what feeds your soul. One step at a time, no rush. Allow your masterpiece to evolve as you evolve. And it will be brilliant because you will put into it your heart and your soul. How's that? That's very appropriate for this moment. Awesome. Yeah. So glad. Yes. Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, so one more question. Francesca, anything from your guides? Let's see what they have to say. I see bright, sunshiny yellow. It's a kind of a cross between a lemon yellow and a butterscotch. So that's very light and uplifting and airy. And it feels like dancing. Had this, this energy of like dancing around and just expressing joy. And yeah, I see you like as a ballerina, you're on point and you're just spinning around. And this energy of joy is just exuding from you. And it's infectious. And all these people want to come and dance with you because it's like you're the Pied Piper. And they see you expressing yourself so beautifully and they want to be a part of it. And so they're drawn to you into your circle. And then it's like, oh, they're like children. And so they're sitting down and there you are standing and you're teaching them and you're sharing wisdom and lessons with them. Whatever it is that delights your heart to share, that's what you're sharing with them. And in the doing, they're being blessed. It's like this cloud 
of beautiful divine love and energy goes out from you and encases them and lifts them all up so you're all levitating together and it's just this light airy energy and that's that's what comes from you how does that feel does it make sense there see try again you hear me yeah I hear you now hey um i don't know because i'm not there yet <laughs> but well the love i have it but i'm in a situation now where i feel like i'm in a deep hole so i i don't i don't see it yet yeah so what they're saying is don't stay in the deep hole when you recognize that you're in a deep hole the best thing you can do is get up and go out and metaphorically dance or you know literally dance if you want to but it's about shifting yourself into that state of energy where you want to dance and express the joy right so don't stay there now that you've recognized it action is required right yes, i'm trying that's something that in the law of attraction world they're all about hey you just got to see it and it'll visualize or you'll manifest it in front of you but they're forgetting that it requires inspired action so when you get breadcrumbs thrown out in your path like right now your guides are saying hey get up and get out of that mud puddle and start moving take that inspired action go do something with it and then see how does it feel is what you're doing helping do you feel better than you did great go do more of that look for the next thing that will bring you joy you're searching for joy you want to get out of the mud puddle yes that i i, yeah. I want to so ready for just a baby step a little bit at a time you don't have to take a huge leap out just a little bit and feel better and then a little bit more and feel better and it, it's you know a building block approach mm -hmm. does that make sense um yes yes <laughs> give it a try see what you can find <laughs> maybe just go out on a playground and and play with the kids uh, it's just very hard for me to do anything why why is it hard to do anything well i I'm trying, uh, but it, it's at my age, I'm starting from zero again. Um, lost everything. I don't have anybody to rely on. Um, I'm a single mother on the, in an agricultural area, so there are no options for work or business. So I'm, I'm just trying to do different things, but it really is baby steps, you know. So it's, it's a little challenging. And I'm trying. I'm trying to meet new people, but there's really nothing going on here. It's just chicken houses and soy fields. Do you have to stay there? I i am stuck here for now because my daughter is still going to school. And then she's going to go to college. And I had to buy a, a house because I had two dogs. I couldn't find anybody to rent um, a house with those two dogs. I couldn't leave them. I had to bring them with me. Um, my family is in Europe. Um, I'm just divorced. I've been dumped by a boyfriend. <laughs> it's, all, it's all kind of bad things together all of a sudden. So it just pushed me to start completely new and try to find something that interests me. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I try one thing. Oh, it's not quite the, the right thing. I try another one. I'm trying to start a business because... My job is physical. I have to work outside all day, nine hours outside, and it's very tiring. So when I come back home, it's, I cannot do much. Yeah. So and I've, been, I've been trying to read my own records, um, and I've seen myself spin, mm -hmm. like pirouettes at, at almost different levels. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's what your soul wants. That's what I want, yes. Yeah. So what you've just expressed to me are a lot of limiting beliefs. I can't because I can't because I can't because. Take all those away, right? Stop canting on yourself or shooting on yourself. Let all that go. What if you didn't have those limitations? Because they're not real. You're only telling yourself that story. Just because in school doesn't mean you can't move. People do it all the time. You're choosing not to move. And that may be a valid choice, but I'd like you to consider that maybe it's not the best choice for you. 
in the meantime, you're on the internet, so look around in your local area and see if there are any meetup groups or support groups where you could get out with people, right? You need to make friends. I'm sorry, yeah, I tried meetup, uh, it's far away. See, we're separate by a big bridge here uh, to the mainland, it's a peninsula. Uh, the closest meetup would be an hour and a half away, maybe. Uh, then, um, well, I, I'm gonna try to do a few things, just start. Yeah, do uh, something, because you just need to take some action to move out of that. And let me tell you, I've gone to meetups that are two hours each way, because they were good and they were worth it. And I did it for months, even during the winter. So don't let that stop you. If you find something you want to do, don't let anything stop you. Because that becomes a habit then, right? You allow those limiting beliefs to come in and, and you're going to get blocked all over the place. And now what you've done is you put yourself in a box and you close the lid. And that's not what your soul wants. Your soul wants to dance. So chip away at it just a little at a time. Just change something. I've been wondering why did I end up here in this place? You know, this is one thing that I would like to know and I can't, I don't have an answer for it yet. Well, it's always about choices that we make, right? We got there because of choices we made, whether you can see yes. them now or not, but that's why. So then it's get yourself out by making new choices. And again, they don't have to be huge, just little things to make you feel better. Because once you start feeling better, you're going to reach for more and you're going to want to feel even better. It's just you're in that place of such inertia right now and like, you know, so closed down. And I can see it coming off you in waves. You don't want to stay there. That's not good for you or your daughter. Mm -hmm. So well, sure. promise, promise us today you will find one small thing that you can do to feel good. Yes, I, I started slowly. I, um, I met somebody who got me into astrology. I'm trying the Akashic Records. I'd like to, go, to do the tower. Those, those are all the things that I always wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So I guess it gives me the time to focus on that for now. Yeah. So what you've just explained is you can shift your perception. Instead of it being a bad thing, it can actually be an opportunity because now you've got the time to explore those things, right? Yes. Right, right. So that's perfect. Do more of that. Flip the story around. Don't make it a negative story. Find a way to make it a positive. Because, you know, in everything, there is truly a silver lining. We just have to find it. And sometimes it's harder to do than others. But use that attitude to bring you out of it step by step. Right. And keep me posted on your progress, okay? Okay. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So we're going to have to end quickly, but um, Roland has a question, Renee has a question, and then Taria. So just those three, and then we're going to wrap. So Roland, what do your guides have to say? I'm getting earth and the smell of earth and the feel of earth and, you know, getting your hands in the dirt and just feeling so good because it's, it's an action that you can take. It's very productive. And so, yeah, of course you said that you're doing that kind of work. So that's an indicator and a validation that you are on the right track and keep doing more of that. And then I'm seeing this giant earth mover, you know, the kind that come in and they just wipe out trees and, clear land and so it's like you are in a battle against that and what your guides want you to know is it's not a losing battle although sometimes it feels that way you really can make a difference don't give up because every single one of us has the ability to make massive ripples in our pond just by small actions because we do a small action and it it impacts somebody else who does a small action and those ripples will spread out wide. So don't be discouraged. Keep doing it as long as it feeds your soul. Now, when you come to a place that it doesn't, then do something different, shift it, shape it differently. It doesn't have to totally change, but you'll want to shift it. And we talked about that earlier with morphing your business. So yeah, it's, it's, this is encouragement for you, Roland, to keep going. 
don't let them get you down all those damn earth movers they can't beat you if you don't let them that's what they want you to know does that help Yes, sorry, I didn't realize I was on mute. Thank you. It makes a lot of sense, actually. Awesome. Yeah, I'll have to send me an email so I'll have your email. Uh, I'll send you a story that I got a, a number of years back. It was a vision about the land being cleared, similar to what I just saw for you, and then the vision of how the earth regenerated. And it was just so spectacularly beautiful. And it was a message of hope. And it concluded by assuring us that man will never be able to destroy what God created. It will not be allowed. Hmm. I'm here to make sure it won't happen too. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah, you're doing your part. You're contributing to that, which is perfect, but not to get discouraged and think that you can't make a difference because you can, and you are. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So Renee, what do your guides have to say? It's weird. I'm feeling this very flatness, like flat line, you know, like a heart monitor flat lining. Are you feeling very depressed? Can you, if you can unmute yourself and just let me know? Because it's, it's a very peculiar thing. It's, it's like you're not living your life. You're not participating, existing. That's what it feels like. Can you, can you speak, Renee? Hello? Yes. Yeah, Renee, go ahead. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes, it does. Very much so. Okay. Very. So if you're flatlining and you're you're not really living what do you want to do with your life i'm not sure i'm elderly and i'm lost <laughs> i'm lost i don't know what i want to do with my life yeah so just like francesca you look around and it feels like you're in a box and there are no options yes but there are always options so I don't know if you meditate, but you can, in meditation, ask your guides to show you or nudge you because you know those breadcrumbs are there. You're just not seeing them. So whatever you can do to relax and allow those inspirations to come forward and to see those breadcrumbs, that would be good to do. I will send yes. you um, a healing meditation. Send me an email so I'll have your address and I'll send you a healing meditation that might help jump you out of that just a little bit. Because again, just like Francesca, you just need to come out a teeny tiny bit and start feeling better. And then it will expand and you'll feel even better. So I know right now it probably looks like a, a massive mountain that's a, a sheer rock face that you can't even get up. But just know, if you can't get up that sheer face, you can probably walk around to the other side and there's a path that'll take you to the top. Or maybe there's a tunnel at the bottom that you can go in and there are stairs leading to the top. There's always a way. We just have to open our eyes and see it. And when we're in that place of feeling hopeless, it's really hard to see it. I know that. So that's when you go internal and you close your eyes and you ask for that guidance and know that it will be there. And you know, if it helps, just reach your hand out while you're in that state and your eyes are closed. Reach your hand out. Let them take your hand and lift you up. And they will. And they will take you to a place where you can have a greater perspective so that you can see the options. And reach out to those around you who love you and ask for help. Don't be afraid to ask for help. You don't have to do this alone. Oh, and here's a big one. So often we don't ask for help because we don't want to bother people. But you know what? If somebody comes to you and asks you for help and you can help them, doesn't that make you feel wonderful? You've actually given them a gift by letting them help you. So consider that for yourself. Ask for help. Let them help you. Give them the gift of lifting you up. Does that make sense? Yes. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. 
Okay, so Taria, you want to ask a question for the group? Yes, thank you very much, Deborah. I am close to a group which has a beautiful place in Crete, but they are having problems, big problems. And I'm asking what would be my most appropriate contribution or assistance to help this group along to find a solution, please. What can you do to help this group? Yes, if anything. Yes. Okay. It feels like you're a supportive kind of person. It's, it's I see you like a, you know, uh, major support beams and buildings that are so pivotal, they hold everything up. That's yeah. the kind of energy that you're bringing. And yeah. so be that support, but don't let them dump it all on you, if that makes sense, because that's enabling them, that you need them to stand up and do their part. It feels like not everybody's pulling their weight. Mm -hmm. And so it's getting shifted onto a few like you who are trying to be the supports. That's not a good foundation. You need more people to participate and to do their part so that you can build a strong foundation that will bless all of you. Does that make sense? It makes so much sense, yes. There aren't enough people. And uh, it's a big um, sort of uh, wondering what to do, whether to sell the place. People are unwilling or there's a lot of energy which is stuck at the moment, like yeah. a loop on the place, we feel. Well, the other thing, then, Taria, if that's the way it is and it's a, a collective thing, yes. and they're all kind of holding you down, then disengage. Don't let them drag you down. Maybe you can get involved with something else that will bring you joy. But don't stay in a place that does that to you. That's not a healthy thing for you. Well, that's what we felt that, well, it's a friend of mine who's helping this well. But it just feels so awful to see things going down and because they will not change or they will not make the moves that we feel would be necessary. So do they have to walk that difficult path to let well, go? They're making their own choices. So you get to choose. Will you engage with them if they're this big immovable object that's mm -hmm. causing strife for you or will you walk away? Exactly. So they get to choose, you get to choose. Exactly. Thank yeah. you. That just uh, yeah, confirms what we've been doing already. Perfect. Thank you, Thank you so much, Deb. You're welcome. You. Okay, so Anna, let's see what your guides have to say. I'm hearing that song, you know, the banana song, Anna, Anna, Banna, Bobana, Fee, Fi, Fo, Fana, Anna. <laughs> I don't know why, <laughs> but that's what comes up. So that's kind of like a playful energy, right? So it could be your guides are encouraging you to be more playful. Can you let me know? Does that make sense? That's how you feel? Okay. Yeah, so it's, it's just affirmation and encouragement to do more of that because when you do, even more wonderful things will happen. And because you're in that place of feeling such bliss, it will spread out from you and it will bless these people that you might not even know about because your energy can really go for miles when you're that charged up and in that state of bliss. You don't even know who it's impacting or how it's impacting. And it doesn't matter because you're in a state of bliss and you're sharing it with the world. And that's perfect. Do more of that. That is wonderful. I love that. Thank you for bringing that energy to our call. It's perfect. Wonderful. Okay, everybody. Well, I'm going to have to run and, and pick up my poor husband. Hopefully he didn't get snowbound. You're going to eat a banana. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for coming. I so appreciate your presence here and contributing to the group. I'll get this recording up probably tomorrow. I'll send you an email with a link to it. And give me a shout if you need anything. Bye for now.